If you've been thinking about getting a stream deck or a loop deck, there are some differences between the two that you'll want to know about before you make your decision. Let's get started. Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. I've been a longtime Stream Deck user and just posted a video about why I think it's a great productivity tool. But I recently was able to try out a Loop Deck, a newer competitor to the Stream Deck. If you've been thinking about putting one of these on your desk, you'll want to check out this video. I'm going to show you some differences that impacted my decision and they might impact yours as well. But before we get started, please take a moment to like this video if you found it useful, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss when I post new how-tos and reviews. Now I'm using a device like this as more of a productivity tool. Both Stream Deck and Loop Deck are mainly used with gamers and content creators doing live streaming. So I was really interested in the design of the Loop Deck Live. Instead of push buttons, it's got a haptic feedback touchscreen. The square windows seem a little bigger than the Stream Deck push buttons, and there's knobs on both sides as well as a row of click buttons at the bottom. This of course translates to lots of customization. I was using a Stream Deck MK2, but recently got a Stream Deck XL. Today I want to focus on the software for both of these devices and point out some things you should be aware of if you're thinking about getting one. Now I'm going to be looking at both of these devices from a productivity point of view. So not paying attention to the gaming or live streaming content creator aspect on either device. Okay, first up is the marketplace for both. Loop Deck's marketplace has way fewer plugins than the Stream Deck. But if you're using Premiere Pro, Final Cut, or Photoshop, Loop Deck includes profiles that will change your layout specific to that app, whereas Stream Deck has plugins, but you have to pay for them. There are some differences between the configuration of a Loop Deck and Stream Deck that I wanted to point out in this video. Um, the first is that Loop Deck, it's really cool. You have a Mac OS profile by default, so you can come in to your Loop Deck and just out of the box, it'll be set up with this Mac OS default profile. And that includes things like Spotlight, um, Lock Screen, it'll even at Launchpad, um, Finder to open a new Finder window, and things like Siri, um, System Preferences, Minimize Window. Those are all just there. Messages shows up. So it's got these little shortcuts that it automatically configures for you. Stream Deck doesn't have that. When you do a Stream Deck, you kind of set up from scratch and you've got all your buttons that you can configure which is not a bad thing because you can completely customize it, but something like a finder window, um, it's nice that Loop Deck has that icon available and it's just there and it's configured and it opens a finder window. You actually have, kind of have to define the path for anything. So like if I wanted a Siri shortcut, I'd have to define the button, go find an icon, set up the icon, figure out the path that triggers Siri on my computer and set that up like I did for finder and I did that for uh, mission control. So you can do it. It's not a big deal. It's just something that's kind of nice if you want an out-of-the-box solution. Loop Deck has that covered for you and, and you have all those things by default uh, available. The other thing, if you're moving from a Stream Deck to a Loop Deck, um, if you take something like example of a con an incognito window in Chrome. So if I wanted to set up an incognito window, uh, which I use sometimes in my, my 9 to 5 job, I'll click on that button, and then I've got two actions. Um, I open Chrome here, and then I do a hotkey to trigger an incognito window. When I moved over to the loop deck and I tried to replicate that, um, I have my multi-action button, and I opened up the application Chrome, and I set my keyboard shortcut to Command-Shift-N, but it didn't work. I actually had to add in the middle, I had to put a delay, of a two second delay in for it to actually trigger the um, Command Shift N hotkey to open the incognito window. So little variations and differences in programming that are, are there as well. Um, as I mentioned before, with things like profiles on the loop deck, this is pretty cool that just out of the box, you have these different plugins available or I'm sorry, profiles available for things like Illustrator, or Premiere Pro, and Photoshop, a couple others, where on Stream Deck, if I wanna find a plugin for that, I'd actually have to pay for a plugin for say Premiere Pro. Um, I could 
create one myself um, and, and figure out the shortcut keys and everything like that, icons for it. But if I wanted to get something like this where Premiere Pro, I can switch this profile over and these are keys specific to Premiere Pro, um, I'd have to pay for that on Stream Deck. On uh, Premiere Pro and on Stream Deck, your profiles can trigger based on application use. So both of them are able to, if I'm in Premiere Pro or I open it, I can have my profile switch over to icons and, and buttons specifically for Premiere Pro. So they both do that, no problem. Um, Premiere or Loop Deck has available an AI assistant, which I did not actually try out, but I thought I'd point it out because AI is kind of big these days. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to try this out, but I just wanted to point out that it is there and I don't believe Stream Deck has one. You could probably program a button to trigger ChatGPT or ChatGPT URL on the Stream Deck side. Um, I wish I had a chance to try this out, um, but just going in here, it looks like you can do some daily life things, make lists, you can do this and it looks, it's a trial license, so this could be a paid thing that you'd have to do as well. Uh, let's talk about knobs for just a quick sec. Knobs are on the loop deck and then the Stream Deck Plus has knobs, but honestly, I don't find much use for knobs unless you're, you've got something with a lot of volume control. Knobs are really not a factor on either of these. There aren't a lot of plugins available that take advantage of the knobs. And um, that SDK has been out on both sides for a while now. So it just seems that the development is pretty slow for things with knobs, uh, which made me lean more towards the Stream Deck XL because I found that the knobs weren't of much use, especially if you have multiple pages of knobs, like there's, there's not a lot you can really program on them at this point. Although on loop deck, you could actually do things, which I thought was cool if I clicked on a knob and went back to my OS here, um, you could do something like a mouse control. So you could actually, if I turn the, now, the mouse or if I turn the knob to the right, it could make the knob, my mouse pointer move to the right. And if I turned it to the left, it could make the mouse pointer move to the left. So that was kind of cool. I, there could be a use for that somewhere. Um, you know, this mouse clicks and drags and movement. Um, so you could do like a horizontal movement and have that go. Oops, I just lost it. So you could do like a mouse control movement horizontal. I could drag and drop this over here. And now when I turn the, my knob left or right, it moves the mouse horizontally one way or the other. So um, that's one function of the knobs, which on a Stream Deck, I will point out, um, on the Stream Deck Plus, I tried to replicate that and I was not able to do that. So the knob could not, I couldn't make the knob turn one way or the other, unless I probably coded something with the SDK and I wasn't gonna go there. So, um, so the knobs, don't have a lot of use on either device in my opinion. On the loop deck side, if you go into custom, there are things like Apple scripts that you can trigger, which you could do the same thing on the stream deck. I just like that loop deck. It's all kind of here and it's available, especially when you look at like the OS desktop, all of these things are just kind of at your fingertips. Whereas on the stream deck, you have to go in and, and kind of figure that out and, and figure it out through um, either hotkey switches or triggering a path to an Apple script or something else like that. You have to kind of figure that out on the Stream Deck where Loop Deck has that included. Okay guys, so that's my uh, take on both Stream Deck and Loop Deck. I actually still prefer Stream Deck. I think it's just a much more established platform and the hardware is more established as well. Also keep in mind that Logitech did recently purchase Loop Deck. So we could see some good or possibly some changes that might happen on the Loop Deck hardware. I think overall it's gonna stay the same, but uh, Logitech's influence is probably gonna come into play at some point, maybe in 2024 or beyond. So keep that in mind as well. And in the end, of course, it comes down to preference and what you think, what you like more aesthetically and design wise between the two. But for me, I like the Stream Deck just because I liked having all the buttons in one space and I liked that kind of muscle memory of being able to feel a button and touch a button and, and use it as I need to, as opposed to the Loop Deck, which was 
um, design wise is a great design but the haptic feedback touchscreen that's there and that panel that's almost kind of laying flat um, if you're not looking at it it's you kind of start to maybe press buttons that aren't there so that's my take on it um, hope you choose to get one or the other and let me know in the comments below if you decided to pick one up which one did you get if you're already using one i'd love to hear your feedback on how you like it so far again thanks for watching everyone and we'll talk to you soon